there guys, my name is Diana, this is Bentley and we're back, we're back from our road trip and I must say it was the most fun road trip I have ever been on and it was Bentley's second road trip but first road trip outside of the UK. You can watch Bentley's adventures on his road trip in the link in the description or just find it on my channel, it's not that hard, my channel is very very small still but hopefully it will get bigger and bigger because I can see that you people are really enjoying this and I got like 20 subscribers now, which is for me like, wow, 20, 20 people? I don't even know why you subscribed. I don't, but I guess you enjoy this. Today I thought I will discuss something a bit more serious with you. It is way more serious than a video blogger being put in jail because he played Pokemon Go in a temple and it's definitely more important than some girl getting popular because she got raped. But once again, this is Meanwhile in Russia. <laughs> about this, maybe you didn't, but I came across a lot of articles, some of them had a lot, a lot of false information, but it seems like nobody really knows what the hell is going on and everybody is blaming this and other things on each other and I just, I just really need to speak out the truth because it seems like nobody will ever know the truth about the situation and this, this actually happened. We, we need to talk about this. I've done a lot of research about this. I've witnessed the whole thing happen. I've witnessed all the video bloggers talk about it. I've witnessed all of the Russian media talk about this. And I've made my conclusions. I'm talking about this online game, which is not really a game. It's not like your normal flash game or browser game that you would see on Facebook or on Chrome. It is a game which is played in real life only through social media messages. So this game has a lot of different names. Most of the time it would be called Blue Whale or Ocean of Whales. Sometimes they would also call this game Quiet House or F57 or 420 or Wake Me Up at 420. I mean, the last two are just ridiculous. If you know what 420 is, good. If you don't, Google that. But it has nothing to do with suicides or teenagers. Trust me with that. It was a game played by two people just messaging each other. The person playing as a curator would message teenagers who posted a specific hashtag on their wall telling them that they are in the game and, well, they can't get out of the game anymore. The game would be played in the duration of 50 days. Each day the teenager would be getting new missions, new tasks to achieve. Most of the time, those tasks would be quite simple, like draw a whale on a paper, or listen to some music, or watch this video a couple of times. But sometimes those tasks would be completely messed up, like cutting yourself, walking on rooftops and railroads, and basically doing very dangerous things. So what those curators would do were prepare the teenagers psychologically, for suicide. They would work on them and work on them and eventually the teenager would have no other choice but to commit suicide. Before I say anything else, I want to clarify, do not mistake this game with the open your gas in the middle of the night one that I've seen. I've seen an article that mixed up those two games. The gas one is not actually a game, it's just a photo online that basically says, if you want to become a Winx fairy, do this and this and this. And one of those uh, clause were, wake up in the middle of the night, go turn on the gas stove, and go back to sleep. Uh, before you go back to sleep, say some magic words or something like that, and you will wake up a fairy. This is a completely different situation. As far as I know, only one little five-year-old or seven-year-old girl got extremely burnt from this. But this is completely different. I've seen an article online, I can't find it, but I've seen an article that mixes up those two games. It was completely fucked up, in my opinion, because how can you mix up those two games? Please don't mix them up. This one is specifically for teenagers. It targets kids from the age of 10 and up, up until they're at least 16 or so. Please don't mistake those games. It has nothing to do with the Winx Fairies. Nothing at all. Nothing. 
So the Blue Whale game started as a couple of pages on the social media website VK, which is a Russian social media website. They would just post deep pictures with some deep music and deep quotes, deep thoughts, whatever, thoughts about life, nothing dangerous in these. But then, somehow these names and hashtags got mixed up with a completely different game online, which was also not dangerous at all. It was a role-playing game where people knew they were role-playing. Somehow that hashtag got out. Um, I think it's pretty much the job of the media in Russia because they just started to talk about that more and more and more, basically giving those people power. The game would go like this. Usually a teenager would post a hashtag on their status, something like hashtag blue whale or hashtag I want to be in the game. After you posted those hashtags, a curator would message you. He will tell you that you are in the game now and you will be receiving missions at specific times. Those curators would give teenagers a bunch of tasks and missions. They would psychologically work on them, which is extremely sad in my opinion because the teenagers they, they don't have a formed mindset yet. They don't know how to express their feelings properly. And they don't know how to deal with some issues in life that us adults know how to deal with. Usually the curators would start with, Why are you here? Why do you want to play the game? And the teenager would say normal, typical teenage things like, Nobody understands me. My parents don't love me. I don't have any friends. I'm sad. I'm miserable. For 50 days they would continue telling that child that, don't you get it? Nobody needs you. Nobody wants you. You've got no friends. Nobody's gonna miss you if you go die. If the game is successful, the teenager on the 50th day would get a task which would include a suicide. Usually it would be go on a rooftop and jump or jump under the rails. Those curators would ask for proof, for pictures, for videos from those locations. Sometimes they would go there themselves to get those pictures and they would sell them. They would sell the pictures of the dead teenagers for money. They were making money that way, which is worse than anything that you could imagine, unless you think of child rapists. I think that would be worse. I, I am not sure. There's just so much evil in this world, so much fucking evil. Honestly, this is extremely evil, extremely sad, just extremely awful. I have no idea why would people even want to deal with that type of stuff. I understand that they want money, but don't they feel that they're actually playing with children's lives? Those people actually did exist. They were adults who were psychologically working on teenagers. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were gonna achieve. It was so sad and it was awful, but thankfully, not a lot of teenagers died from those games, to be honest. Only seven teenagers, seven died in the whole of Russia from those games. In the whole of Russia, seven. Seven teenagers in the whole of Russia. But the media has made it look like it's a lot bigger and a lot worse. Why? I will explain now. Most teenagers would not be as vulnerable to those type of games. They would try to get out of the game in the middle of it or even in the very beginning. But the curators would tell them that they can't get out, that the curators know where they live, know where their parents live, and they're gonna come and kill everybody that they love if the teenager doesn't go and kill themselves. Most of the time they would do this by sending the teenager a link that would then get the teenager's IP address and somehow with some sort of magic, the hackers would get the home address out of the IP address. I mean, I don't know IT that much, but I know that it's almost impossible to get somebody's home address from an IP address. It doesn't work like that, but somehow they did. And those teenagers were being harassed and blackmailed into going to kill themselves. They had no other choice. They thought that if they don't go and die, Something is bad is gonna happen to their parents, something bad is gonna happen to their grandparents, to their friends. It's awful. The teenagers, they're vulnerable to those kind of things because they don't have a formed mindset yet. They don't have a formed psychological maturity yet. They're just not mature enough to understand those things properly. And and I know that because I was a teenager myself just a while ago. I still don't consider myself to be an adult. I feel like I'm still a teenager. So the Russian media went a bit insane with those news. 
they started basically stating that almost every single teenage suicide relates to those games and to the internet. The teenagers commit suicide because of violent video games, violence on the internet, and memes, and videos, and all other bullshit that doesn't really affect teenagers to the point that they want to commit suicide, to be honest. Thankfully, the government actually did took action. Every single page that has a hashtag on it that has anything to do with those games got blocked. They're still blocked. You can barely find any of them anymore. So thank God for that. They're actually doing something. The people who were actually responsible for those groups were arrested. But the trend itself, it spread. It spread like a wildfire in a very dry forest. A lot of fake pages and fake curators started to appear. And of course, people who monitor those social media websites, they don't have that much time to monitor every single page and block it all the fucking time. So those pages still got out with different hashtags and different meanings. It was just teenagers knowing what has happened and trying to um, I don't know, look cool, I guess, in front of their friends, be like, look at me, I am being a curator, I can do shit, I can make somebody scared, I can make somebody kill themselves. I honestly don't know why, but teenagers started doing the same freaking shit. It was weird, but obviously no teenager died because of another teenager, thankfully, because teenagers are not adults who know psychology, they're just silly little kids having fun, unfortunately. Apart from that, actual people who were somehow interested in those news and that game getting out paid a bunch of people, over a hundred people, to pretend to commit suicide on their social media page. And the news started saying that hundreds and hundreds of teenagers are committing suicides. Now it's just wrong. Now they're just using it to gain publicity because Nobody died anymore. Those seven kids, yes, they did die, but nobody else died because of those stupid, stupid blue whale games. Actual physical statistics show that in the last year, in 2016, only 1% of all teenage suicide deaths were linked somehow to the internet in general. 1% out of 710 teenage suicide, 1%. That is seven people. How come the media is making the internet look like such an evil, evil place? I don't know why they're thinking that. God knows. Any failure in the teenager, any kind of issue that a teenager will have, it's all blamed on everything else around them and not on the parents. The parents would never blame themselves. The parents would always think that they're the most perfect parents in the world while their teenager is actually very suicidal and looking for ways to die. Which is what those teenagers were actually doing. They were not trying to commit suicide because they got told to. They were not trying to commit suicide because they were influenced by the pictures and music on the internet and they were influenced by their friends. No! Usually teenagers would be suicidal and would be that emotional because They've got issues at home, because of their parents, because of their surroundings. It's never about the internet, and internet is just an escape for those teenagers. They have nowhere else to go. And today, the internet, when it's so accessible for everybody, where everybody has free Wi-Fi anywhere, and mobile internet in their pocket, well, where else are the teenagers supposed to go? Church? Are you kidding me? Hell no! You cannot continue blaming the internet and social media on these things. You just have to stop with that and take responsibility for your own kids and your own actions. I know I was a teenager myself and honestly, I was suicidal, yes. When I was 14, 15, 16, I was very suicidal and I was very, very close to actually jumping off my balcony or cutting myself hard enough to bleed to death, it was an extremely sad time for me. And it was not because I was playing violent games, it wasn't because I was listening to sad music on the internet, and it was not because I was sitting online. To be honest, my social media pages looked like I was the most happiest teenager in the world, listening to pop music and the Jonas Brothers and just enjoying life. 
but in reality I was really really upset and really miserable because I had a lot of conflicts in my family I felt like I was not understood my parents honestly had no clue how to raise a teenager they thought that they did they thought that they were doing the best job ever but to be honest if I would have stayed with them and not moved to London I would have probably been either dead or either in a mental hospital because I was honestly going completely crazy and it took me years and years and years of living by myself and growing up understanding as an adult what life is and why my parents did the things that they did please parents please let your child decide what they want to do and please listen to your child sit down and talk with them don't read lectures to them don't teach them about life in the way that you do please don't just sit down and talk if you want your child to be happy you should have some kind of trust between you and your child your child should be able to come to you and tell them anything that's on their mind any issues that they have and be able to discuss this with you without the fear that their mom or dad are gonna start yelling at them because they've done something wrong or they said a wrong word or their story is not liked by their parents they're not your property they don't belong to you they're as much of a human being as you are and the only person who can make them into a good human being a happy human being a fulfilled human with ambitions in life is you the parents just recently a new proposal for a new law has came to the Kremlin and is being reviewed right now by all the government officials. The law is to ban all kids under the age of 14 from using all social media websites. And everybody thought it was a joke. Everybody thought, oh, they're not gonna do that. They, they can't do that. But they did. They did. And they're going to. How will they implement it? It's easy. In order to register on a social media website in Russia, you will need to use your passport details. You only get your passport in Russia when you turn 14. So basically the social media pages will just be kids free. The fact that they're gonna use passport details online means that not only are they gonna keep all of your personal messages in their history, which is another law that they implemented last year, and it's already in action. So the officials will not only have all of your personal messages and personal details, they will also know where to find you and who you are. Of course, Russia won't be able to implement that new law on websites like Facebook. Most likely, after this law is actually implemented, most people, including adults, will stop using Russian social media pages because, I mean, who the fuck wants their details to be known? Now here's a good example how the media, even the Western media, is twisting other situations and other incidents into this story and somehow mixing it up and basically confusing you. This is the first article that I found on Google about this theme on English. The rest were not as interesting, so I picked this one for you. Moscow, the Russian ninth graders Katya Volsova and Denis Muraevyov like to post daily documentary about their lives. The two skinny teens shared their selfies and videos with friends on Russian's most popular social media network Kontakte, as well as on Instagram and Priscope. There were a couple, Katya and Denis, confined to their virtual friends. Then, last May, the high school students escaped from their parents to a house in their village. Somehow they'd find weapons, shooting their parents and police as they closed in on them before finally committing suicide. Russian TV channels, including Rossiya Adin, aired the video footage on Denise in front of the open window, saying, my last moments of life, before sticking a gun out of the window for another round of shots. Before dying, Katya and Denise posted their goodbye video message on social networks, which were viewed by thousands of other teenagers across Russia. One of the questions under their post read, where is the video of how they were killed? Many doubted that the two children ended their lives voluntarily. Almost a year later, the repercussions from that moment of adultness, love, and death continued to echo on the Russian web, reinforced by global spread of selfie violence on social media as Facebook Live became too often Facebook killing, dying, and dead. From Silicon Valley to the city of Piskov, 
people are trying to find ways to avoid such strategies. We know we need to do better, one Facebook executive said in a statement after a man named Steven Stephens shot and killed a stranger, then uploaded the video. Preskov Region sat down to discuss whom to blame for the tragedy. Some parents suggested cancelling social media networks, others banning them. Then, while Russia was still healing and guessing where Katya and Denis killed themselves or if they died from police bullets, there came news about group deaths on the Kontakti social network. The horror games called Blue Whale, F-57 and Quiet House involved tens of thousands of people all over Russia and neighboring Ukraine and Kazakhstan. The game targeted depressed teenagers online and invited participants to obey the orders of some virtual curators for 50 days leading up to the last day where they were committing suicide. And this is the last that they talk about the actual couple, Denise and Katya, in this article. Basically, they're hinting on the fact that Katya and Denise are dead today because of the social media and because of the fact that they used social media that much, which is a complete lie. So let me shine a light on this story for you. Katya and Denise were both 15 years old, ninth graders living in quite good families that had money, houses, everything they would want. They were not poor, they could buy everything they wanted, but of course money can't buy happiness. Their parents were quite harsh, quite controlling, and of course the teenagers disliked it a lot. In the live stream itself, Katya and Denise explained why they were doing all of this. They were lost, their parents were really harsh with them. They had just another conflict and that was the straw. That was the last straw for those kids, and they ran away to a house that's owned by the girl Katya's stepfather, who's got a hobby of hunting. That's where they got the guns. The guns were in a safe inside of the house. The safe was a quite a cheap safe. It was quite easily broken into, and the kids started using those guns. But they did not start using those guns just because they wanted to. The police arrived to the house, started surrounding the house and started yelling at the kids to exit and to surrender. That's when the kids took the guns out and started going completely crazy because at that moment they were already drunk, they were already lost, they were mentally incapable of understanding what the hell is going on, which is quite clear from their video stream, their live stream that they did just before they died. I will also leave the links in the description if you want to see the whole thing. It's over an hour long. Katya and Denise were drunk and psychologically drained. They have two choices now, either surrender or die. But the thing is, last couple of minutes of the stream, they said that they cannot kill themselves because they ran out of bullets. They had no bullets whatsoever, not in a single gun that they've used. They've said to themselves, we only have empty shells lying all over the place, so we don't know how to kill ourselves, we can't kill ourselves. Our only option is to surrender. But the kids were found with bullet holes in their body. It wasn't specified where the bullet holes were, which is quite weird, and one of the main reasons why I think that the kids did not commit suicide themselves, but were killed by the police when they finally decided to go into the house. It probably was not intentional, but the media makes it look like the internet is to blame and those kids were driven into being Bonnie and Clyde and committing suicides together because of internet. Stop blaming the internet for everything. Everybody has access to the internet, including normal people, murderers, psychotic people, pedophiles. Anybody today can go on the internet and do and say whatever they want to your kids, to other kids, to anybody. So please, don't blame the internet for your issues. Don't blame the internet for your kids' issues. Teenagers used to commit suicide before there was the internet. Teenagers used to commit suicide before mobile technology. It doesn't matter. Banning the internet because of those things is just gonna make things worse because then the teenagers will have nowhere to escape to. Thank you so so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you're a parent and you're watching this, 
please don't get insulted. I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm not saying that you're a bad parent. I don't think anybody is a bad parent. Try to respect each other and love each other, of course. Thank you so much for all your comments and views. Thank you so much for the subscriptions. I love you so much for that. And this is motivating me to make new videos. Let me know what you'd like me to film about next. I do have an idea already, but I want the script to be perfect before I film this. I'm not gonna rush into it because this is a very huge theme right now, also about Russia. I really hope that clarified things. If you have any questions at all about the Blue Whale games, about Denise or Katya and how things happened with them, just drop me a question in the comments. I read every single one, I answer every single one. And I thank every single one of you. Thank you so much. You're lovely. And I'll see you next time.